Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. As a church, we just keep growing and and just just developing new new ideas of, of how we can create a, a community that reaches um, everyone. You know what? We 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 love we love diversity of not just uh, of you know of skin color and 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 age and all those wonderful things, muse everything. But we also love that the diversity of doing very unique services. We're gonna we're gonna be doing very soon a service call and more, <laughs> and uh, and it's gonna be on a uh, on a Sunday evening, and it's gonna be a prophetic it's gonna be a prophetic service. And uh, we're just we're just throwing things out because you know what I believe that that you should never stop being hungry for more. Uh, if you're not hungry for more, then you're full. And uh, and if you're full, then there's not much that God can fill, right? And, and God wants us to to go to a, a new level. Let me say new level. You know, have you ever heard that statement? New level, new devil. Have you guys ever heard that? No, you guys have never heard that. Okay, well now you heard it. There's this whole thing they say, you know what, man, when you go to a new level, there's a new devil. But why does it have to be that way? Why do we have to, why do we have to spooky spiritualize it all? Like, why can't it be something like new level, it's time for change? Like, why can't it be that? Why does it have to be a devil? Why does the devil always have to be thrown in there when God wants to take you to a next level? Like, why? Can I get an amen? Like, like I mean, um, yes. Uh, new level, new challenges, uh, more people, more problems, uh, <laughs> more money, more bills, right? So it, it just kind of comes with the territory when you want to take your life to the next level. And um, I want you to know that the next level for you is, is the next level that God wants but the question I have for you is, what is your next level? Like, do you want to survive or do you want to thrive? Like, you have to ask yourself right now, like, what does your next level look like right now? What is, that, what, is, what is the next level? Because I know that many of us, we believe that God wants to take us to another level. But what does that mean? What does that look like? Okay, you say, okay, I want, I, want, I want my finances to go to the next level. Okay, so what does that look like? How are you going to take your finances to the next level? How are you going to take your marriage to the next level? How are you going to take your children to the next level? So um, there is a level, but, but you got to find out the steps to get to that next level. It doesn't just happen. New levels don't just happen. You can pray it all you want, and that's awesome. I think that's a good starting point. But you also have a responsibility to want to thrive and to want and to want to go to that next level, whatever that may be. I don't know what your next level is. I know my next level um, is for us in the next few years to really start thinking about um, getting us out of this building or tearing it down and rebuilding it in three stories high. And, uh, but that's, that comes with steps. And, and, and yes, I have enough insight and wisdom to put a plan together. But how many know that before I start planning the next level of this church, I should go find out from the source who has the next step for my life, right? We make a lot of decisions based on our information. And um, let me know how that's working for you. And I know that we're here because we want to be, we want to be uh, spiritually led by the Holy Spirit. We want to be God-led. I think if I were to ask the question, how many here want to be led by God? Lift your hand. How many here would like to be led by God? Okay, that's awesome. It's the right church then. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be led by God? What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? What, is that, what does that even mean? For example, 
Many of us want to go to the next level, but uh, for example, uh, there's these two guys, right? I like fishing. Any, anybody like fishing here? Okay, fishing is so cool, man, I'll tell you. If you're not a fisherman, you probably, you're not a disciple of Jesus, because, man, that's where, <laughs> just, I'm just saying. Uh, but there is these two guys, and and uh, they were out fishing out in the ocean. And uh, and one of the guys is looking at his friend, like, just staring at him, just like, just like bewildered, just scratching his head, like, what the? And And his friend was like, bringing in fish left and right so he was bringing in these big huge fish and and in addition to a few small fish but man this guy was like bam reeling them in and bring them in the boat and then taking a look at it and then throwing the big fish back in the water and he kept doing the same thing over and over again the guy couldn't handle it anymore he was already all freaked out stressed out like what are you doing bro why are you throwing the big fish back into the water and keeping small little fish what is wrong with you man and he said, well, the problem is, is that my frying pan only fits fish this big. <laughs> so many of us are trying to go to the next level with a frying pan this big. You're trying to change, but your capacity level doesn't match what God wants to give you. So how do I, how do I expand my capacity level? How do I take my life to the next level? Do you even think about a next level? I mean, you attend a church called Elevate. So what does Elevate mean to you? Are you with me tonight? Let's, can we just talk? I know, I know this is all I, I wasn't supposed to speak tonight. But, you know, my wife sent me a letter in the mail and said, we would like to invite you to be a guest speaker this Wednesday night. And, and it was all last minute. And then I responded. I said, okay, thank you so much for the invitation. I'll come. And, and so I thought to myself today, I'm like, you know, I'm just, I just want to talk. Can I just talk tonight? Because I, I really believe that many of us here, we desire to go to another level, a next level, a higher level. Uh, but but there, there, there is... There is something in the scriptures that God has placed on our lap. It's called the Holy Bible that gives us the instruction and the guidance on how to do that. But we have to take the time to really begin to embrace God's divine design. And when you do that, you will begin to see that there's going to be great fruit. But the problem is that there's very few people that can get their mind above their circumstance. Are you hearing me? There are very few people that can get their mind above their opinion. There are very few amount of people that can get their mind above their challenges. So think about this. If you're wanting to go to the next level then you have to think above the level you're in now. You, ha you must. For example, when I preach here, many of you, and I've had people say this, like, Pastor, why were you staring at me? I'm like, I wasn't staring at you, man. It's like, yeah, why? when you said that, when you were talking about this, X, y, why were you looking? I, I didn't do nothing, man. I'm just like, uh, uh, honestly, you know, when I preach, I don't see anybody, honestly. I train myself to blur all of you out. Why? Because I used to be afraid to speak publicly. And so I, I trained myself to just blur everybody out. And so I just preached a bunch of blobby, blurry people. And it's just, and, and, but, but, but my point is this, is I don't preach to the church size I have. I preach to the church size I want. Why? Oh, there you are. You're one of them pastors that just wants to blow up the church, make it big. No, I'm one of those pastors that sees every chair as an opportunity for someone to come to Jesus Christ. I see every chair, every empty chair as an opportunity where your family, the people that you claim to believe that you want to come to know Jesus, that you want their marriages healed, your children restored, you know, families to be reconciled. I'm believing that those are the chairs that will be filled with those kind of people, right? The co-worker right now who's struggling right now with their family, that person sitting right here, 
And so, but what happens is that very few people can get their mind above their, even their own beliefs. Most people have their own doctrine. And so we're trying to figure out how do I, how do I go to the next level? Well, you can't, you can't go to the next level when your mind is here and when your God is there. So let me, let me, let me, uh, let me give you a verse. I'm going to just read two verses tonight. And uh, Colossians chapter 3, look at this. Colossians chapter 3. I have read this verse uh, a bazillion times. And, and I just really felt like, wow, this, is, this, this makes total sense. Because sometimes you do things by accident until one day you, fi one day you finally, you know, get, get a language for what you really believed. And you start now doing things in t with intention. But look, look what it says here. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 through 3. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ. How many believers do we have here tonight? How many, you say, yeah, I'm a Christian, praise God, hallelujah. I ain't even embarrassed about it. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Well then, since then you have been raised with Christ. He says, now, if you have been raised with Christ, then your job, my job, is to set your hearts on things, what? Where does your heart belong? Isn't it, isn't it true that it is so hard to go to the next level when you can't get your heart above your drama? So if you are in Christ... We are now responsible to set our hearts, set our hearts on things above. And it says, where Christ is. So, so right now, whatever challenge you are facing, the answer is not your idea, your opinion, or the committee's uh, uh, suggestions. Your answer is above in Christ. Whatever hard issue that you're dealing with right now, the only one who can bring healing, restoration, reconciliation is found above. The question is, can you get your mind above your situation? And so it goes on to say where Christ is, and he's seated at the right hand of God. He says, set your minds. Look, there's set your heart, now set your what? Minds. As a man thinks in his what? Heart, so what? So is he. So, so here, uh, we see that the apostle Paul is saying, hey guys, if you, if you claim to be in Christ, and if you really want to go with to the next level with your spiritual walk with God, if you want to go to the next level in your business, in your career, if you want to go to the next level in your walk with God, then you need to start setting your hearts on things above and you need to start setting your minds on things above. Not on earthly things. Another version, the original version says not only or not just on earthly things. The problem is, is that most Christians just focus on earth. When your next level is above. So we can find strategy, we can find structure, we can find programs, we can find all these things, but heaven above eats all that for breakfast. Right? I mean, heaven above just, it's like, he's like Pac-Man, just eats it all up. Please stay with me. Because I really, truly believe that your next level, if you just, listen, get your head above the clouds. And, and you watch and see, look, we'll keep talking. It'll all make sense. It says, so set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you what? Died. So right now, whatever you're not willing to look above <laughs> says that you're still living for you. So whatever challenge, whatever trial that you're facing right now, if you are struggling with it and you're not, you're not able to see yourself above the situation, it's because your mind has been put a limit on it to 
set its mind and heart on things above. Because here's what, the, the bottom is crowded, guys. We're all like this at the bottom, but the top is lonely. We're, too, we're, we're all too squished at the bottom because we don't allow our minds to be set above our circumstance, above our situation, above our problems. The answer is above. It's not on this earth. The earth is passing away. The answer is heaven. Heaven is forever and eternity that never ends. And it's awesome. And I love this verse because the, 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 the formula here is the only way to go up is to die to you. And your life is now hidden in Christ. So you know what that means? That means that when you begin to set your heart and your mind on things above, you are now setting yourself up to know the mysteries of God for your life. The mysteries are above. The hidden things are only in Christ. The hidden gems that God has for your life right now, you can only find them in him. Without him, there's only you. So, so this, this verse like just dissects of the, the idea of what does the next level look like? Well, he begins to give you the sandwich approach. <laughs> All right, set your heart, set your mind on things above and, and uh, not on earthly things. And then he says, but, but the only way to do that is you got to be dead. We have to be dead to your opinion. Be dead to your idea. Be dead to whatever thought you have right now that if it's earthly, then it's not from God. And you know what's awesome is like God gives us this cheat test. He gives us an open, an open book test. He gives you all the answers. He says, okay, take the test now. And so here he's saying, I want you to set your mind, set your heart on things above. And when you, when you, when you set your mind on things above, here's what happens. There, there, there's, there is something, and this is what I was thinking today. I'm like, man, there is something that we are supposed to be that we are not yet. Think about it. There is something that you are to be right now that you're just not yet. And the reason that you're not yet healed or that you're not yet there is because we have not yet set our mind on things above. We're so earthly minded because we live on earth. But if you want to be a spiritual son, a spiritual daughter, if you want to know God's hidden treasure, if you want to know God's hidden mysteries concerning your life, you got to start putting this little head and that little heart above. And how difficult it is to set anything above when you're in it. It's a challenge, isn't it? And so I know that there are things that I'm supposed to have that I have not yet obtained. But the only way to obtain them is I got to start setting my heart and my mind on things above and not things on this earth. Please listen to me tonight. We rarely, let's be honest, we rarely as believers, we rarely as people ever truly draw our our, our, our solution from above. It's rare. Can we all just agree to that? Yeah, come on, let's keep it real. So, so tonight I'm trying to bring us some, some God revelation that, hey, man, I have to intentionally, man, I got to start. Like right now, you may be in a problem, a situation, and you're trying to figure it out. But the truth is this, is that you can't figure it out. Why? Why can't I figure it out? Because I'm thinking so earthly minded that my answer is heavenly minded. My next breakthrough, it, 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 I'm looking for it. I'm searching for it on earth, and I'm never going to find it. Why? Because it's, it's above. It's, it's waiting for you. 
But the question is, are you hungry and are you thirsty to seek him who is above, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, who you are now hidden in Christ Jesus. When you realize that I am now hidden in Christ Jesus, then I can begin to see the things that God wants for my life. But until then, what am I going to do? Listen, if you want to go to the next level, you have to, you have to read more. Man, you got you to gotta sacrifice more. Huh? Read more books. Connect with the right they. Who are the right they? The right people. He who hangs with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be what? Destroy. Why? That's earthly, man. You know what? When, you, when Jesus picked out his disciples, he stuck his head up to heaven and said, hey, God, who are they? It says that Jesus, he, he, he departed from everybody, went to a mountain, prayed, came back down the mountain, and he then picked them based on what heavenly father above said to pick. What if you were to pick your next partner in business from heaven? What if you were to pick your spouse from heaven? I bet it wouldn't look anything like heaven would want it. Huh? You want a six pack? Huh? Buff. God probably wants a guy with, you know, I wouldn't even say that. Are you hungry? That means I got to study more. That means I have to do things that no one's willing to do. Are you hearing me? But it starts with setting my heart and my mind on things above. It starts there. Whatever you give yourself to gives back to you. Whatever you give yourself to gives back. So think about it. If I give myself to setting my heart to things above, what do you think the Father is going to give me back? Healing. Restoration. Whatever you give yourself to will always give back. As a matter of fact, there's a verse for that in the Bible. It's called, whatever you sow, that you shall also reap. Huh? Give yourself entirely to setting your heart on things above. And God makes that statement so clear. He says, seek those things which are above. Some people can't even get their mind above poverty. Why? Because, man, our mind is, I have no money. I, have, I, 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 I don't have enough. I'll never have enough. You, you, you can't even get your mind above that thought. Uh, I'm not happy. Uh, I'm sad. Uh, nobody likes me. You can't even think above the now. You see, faith is like the song we, we sang, invade. You have to call those things that be not as though they were, right? So you have to begin to believe beyond your now. You know what? Sometimes for some of us, uh, we're at the place where we can't get our mind above our past. We can't get, we, we're just so stuck in our past. The answer is set your heart and your mind on things above. That is the that is the only answer, and he says, and he says, and when you do that, you you're not just setting it in the in the in the clouds like hey, <laughs> can you guys picture clouds in your head up there? You guys see it? Can you imagine it? No, no. He says you set your heart and your mind on things above, at Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father. Come on, somebody. He's saying, put your eyes back on Jesus. Jesus is the answer to your joy. Jesus is the answer to your strength. Jesus is the answer to your wisdom. Jesus is the answer to your peace. So we're not just setting our minds in the clouds. We're setting our mind on things above. Looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he has my next level. Is this good or what? Okay, I know it's simple, but it's good. But what's our problem? We have to stop programming our mind to think down here. <laughs> We've programmed our mind. We think low. We think small. We're, we're the small frying patch fish catcher. Let me give you another word, verse because this is really good. I'm almost done already. We're almost out of here. For I have never spoken, John 12, 49, 50. This is Jesus. For I have never spoken. Listen. For I have never spoken. For I have never spoken. For I have never. What if you lived a life where you have never done anything without setting your heart and mind on things above? 
That's hard when you live on things below. So God's like, hey, I'm trying to take you higher. I'm trying to get you from the earth above. Man, because this earth, if you think you're going to stay here forever, guess what? Eh, wrong. <laughs> we will all go above. And then you'll be judged and hopefully we don't go below. <laughs> right? And so for I never, I never have spoken on my own initiative or authority, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment. Who, who gave it to him? The Father. No, I didn't just say the Father. It says the Father himself. God himself wants to give you the next step for your above. The Father himself. Regarding what to say and what to speak, I know that his commandment is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak in accordance with his exact instruction. His what? Exact instruction. What does he want to do? He wants to give you what? Exact instruction. What's my, what's my next level? God will say, okay, here is exactly how we're going to do this. Just as the Father has what? Told me. You can play music already. Isn't that cool? Let me tell you a story as I get us out of here now. By the way, parents, I, I'm going to change our Wednesday night services to um, an hour and 15 minutes. So we can get your babies to bed for school. But listen. This last week, I had the honor and privilege to sit down with a, uh, he's probably a billionaire. And, um, and this guy's a born-again Christian. And if I, t if I said the company name, you, you would know the company. And as I sat with him, um, he took a liking to me, which I'm like, that's awesome, right? This guy would make time to sit with me and hang out with me. And, um, and so we're talking, and I was learning about his business and how he started his business 30 plus years ago. Him and a friend who is still his partner 30 plus years later. Rare. It's hard to keep Christians in unity for even 30 minutes, you know. Um, and, and as I'm listening, I'm asking him questions. So, so how did all this come to, to this? Because I was at his office and his, his company is huge, man, just like bomb.com. It was amazing. And, and I'm like, so how, what's this story? He said, well, you know what? God, this is God's my story. He said, you see, God gave me this idea. But with the idea that God gave me, God said that I am to support ministries that reach at-risk children. And he said, I have uh, built schools, orphanages in Africa, Thailand, and, uh, and he said, as he was talking about the things he did, which I won't get into that because it's my time, but he said, and now he's, he's now passed his business over to his sons, and he's coming to the place where he's just kind of overseeing and just kind of helping his kids take the business and keep spreading, the, and they keep growing, and he said to me, but you know, Mauricio, he said, God told me there's one last thing I have left. Who told him? Where do you think he set his mind at? You see, when you set your mind and your heart on things above, God can trust you. When you set your mind on things of this earth, God cannot trust you with money. And he cannot trust you with lives. And he cannot trust you with anything from above. He said to me, Mauricio, he said, so, he's like, oh. he's like, that's it. I already told God, what was the last thing I'm supposed to do? He said, you know what, Latin America, I'm to do now something in Latin America. And that's why he's sitting with me. And he says, so, here's the deal, man. He's like, at once I do, once I do Latin America, I'm done. I'm done. He's like, I'm done. He's like, I have done everything God the Father has told me to do. That is just so brilliant. Your next level is above, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and his name is Jesus. You want, you want success? St stay and keep your mind on the earth. You want God's success? <laughs> Set your heart 
Set your mind on things above. You want, you want relationships? Set your mind on that. You want godly, divine relationships? Set your heart and your mind on things above. You want rest? Go get yourself a nice hotel and a nice bed and get a good night's sleep. Do you want everlasting peace? Set your heart and your mind on things above. Stand with me. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.